This is a lesson all about radians. Now imagine a circle with a slice of pie taken out of it, a sector, and the sides of that sector are both the radius of the circle, which I've called R, and then the angle in that sector is theta. That's the Greek letter theta, often used to denote angles. And for this particular angle that I've drawn, you can see that the arc length of the sector is less than the radius. But if I made theta a much bigger angle, then we could get an arc length that was greater than the radius. Somewhere in between those two, there is an angle, theta, that will give you an arc length that is exactly equal to the radius. And we're going to find out what that is. So, a full circle is 360 degrees, but we've only got theta degrees out of that, so we've only got theta 360ths of the circle. And we want theta 360ths of the circle, so that, that arc, to be equal to r. So, so theta 360ths of the circumference has got to be equal to r. Now the formula for the circumference is just 2 pi r, so what we're saying is that we want theta over 360 times 2 pi r to be equal to r. Multiplying both sides of that by 360 gets rid of, gets rid of the fraction, and we get theta times 2 pi r equals 360r. Tidying up that left-hand side a bit, we can just write that as one expression, so theta times 2 times pi times r is just 2 pi r theta equal to 360r. And on both sides of that, we've got um, something we can factorize. We've got 2 there and 360 there. So we can just divide both sides by 2 to get pi r theta equals 180r. That's got r both sides of it. So we can just divide by r both sides to get pi theta equals 180, and dividing both sides by pi, we get theta equals 180 over pi. And 180 over pi is something we can, we can just work out on the calculator. It's about 57. So that angle in there is about 57 degrees, um, and it's exactly 180 over pi degrees. So the angle that makes the arc length the same as the radius is about 57 degrees and exactly 180 over pi. And we call that one radian. So one radian is the angle that does that. So radians are just a unit of measuring angles in. So you're used to degrees being a thin little angle, 360 of them make a circle. A radian is a much bigger unit that we can measure, measure things to do with circles in. And conversely, one degree would be, just flip that fraction over, pi over 180 radians. So you're used to things being in different units, um, so distances could be in kilometers, but they could also be in miles. So this is no different to that. A radian is just a unit of measurement for angles that is different from degrees. So we're going to talk about the arc of a circle. Now if, if we were to work out the length of an arc of a circle in degrees, we'd say it was theta 360ths of the circumference. So the whole circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. But because we've only got theta degrees, it's only theta 360ths of 2 pi r. However, if we were given that angle in radians, then we'd need to multiply it by 180 over pi, about 57, to get it into degrees. So if we're given the angle in radians, it's the same thing, but times 180 over pi for getting the radians into degrees. And once we've got it like that, the thing cancels out quite neatly because we've got a pi on the top, a pi on the bottom. We've got 2 times 180 on the top 
and 360 on the bottom, so they all cancel each other out. And it just leaves you with the arc length equals theta times r. So if we happen to have been given the angle theta in radians, then the length of an arc is just theta times the radius, which is pretty neat because it eliminates the need for using pi. So we're going to get another formula for the area of a sector, so the area of like a slice of pizza. And if we were given the angle in degrees, then we'd work out the sector area as theta 360 of the whole area. So in other words, theta 360 of pi r squared, because the area of a circle is pi r squared. So theta on the top, 360 on the bottom, times pi r squared. That's if the angle's in degrees. But if we're given the angle in radians, then we'd need to multiply by 180 over pi to get it into degrees. And once we do that, again, things cancel out neatly. We've got um, 180 on the top, 360 on the bottom. So that's just the same as a half. That, that's the same as having a 2 on the bottom. We've got a pi on the top and the bottom. They just cancel each other out. So it leaves us with theta r squared divided by 2, or, or in other words, a half theta r squared is another way of saying that. So if we're given the angle in radians rather than the degrees, then the area of the sector, the area of the sector is simply a half theta r squared or theta r squared divided by 2, however you want to say that. Again, that's a pretty neat formula because it eliminates the need for using pi. The pi part of this is kind of hidden inside the theta. Okay, one more formula. We're going to work out the area of a segment. So I always confuse sector and segment. Sector is like a slice of pi, and a segment is a part of a circle that's been cut off by a chord. So the segment area is the sector area minus the triangle area. So in other words, the, the slice of pi, the sector, take away the triangle here, the white triangle, leaves you with the segment. So the area of the, the sector is a half r squared theta, as we saw before. Now the area of the triangle is just a half r squared sine theta. That just comes from the a half a b sine c formula that we have from trigonometry because the a and the b are just the sides of that triangle which are the radius of the circle so it's r times r and then the angle between them is just the theta so that's the c in the formula becomes the theta. We can factorize a half r squared out of that because they've both got a half in them and they've both got r squared in them. So that's the same as a half r squared brackets theta minus sine theta. So that gives us a, gives us a neat little formula for the area of a segment. A half r squared brackets theta minus sine theta if that angle theta is in radians.